Lesson 113, Perimeter, Symmetry, and Reflections. We've been learning about geometry figures. One important measurement that you have to do a lot in geometry is to calculate the perimeter of a figure. The perimeter is just the distance all the way around the figure. A simple example would be the perimeter of a rectangle. The side lengths are labeled. You can see. Why don't you go ahead and add them all up? Good. So the perimeter of this rectangle is 38 inches. That's all you have to do to calculate a perimeter. It's pretty easy. Now, since the opposite sides of a rectangle are always equal to each other, another way to calculate the perimeter is to just use multiplication. We could have done 2 times 12 plus 2 times 7. And the answer would have come out the same, obviously. In general, the perimeter of any rectangle equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. That's another way to do it. A lot of times, perimeter is represented by the letter P, and then W stands for width, and L stands for length. So the perimeter of a rectangle is written like this. What about the perimeters of other figures? Well, the perimeter of a square is really easy because all four sides of a square are equal. What's the perimeter of this square? Good. With a square, you can add up the sides one at a time or just multiply the side length by 4. 4 times 8 is 32. Here's the fast way to calculate the perimeter of a square. Now let's calculate the perimeter of a more complicated figure. Here's a hexagon. This doesn't qualify as a regular hexagon because the sides aren't all the same length, but it's still a hexagon since it has six sides. Go ahead and figure out the perimeter. You got it. So the perimeter here is 32.1 centimeters. Sometimes you have to calculate the perimeter of a figure that has certain sides missing. Look at this one. We'll assume that all of the angles are right angles here. And see, we've got two side lengths that are missing, here and here. But we can figure these out by using the information we already have. Let's put an extra dashed line segment here. Now, why don't you figure out the length of this dashed segment? That's right. It has to be 6 because, remember, the angles are all right angles, and so this is a rectangle, and the opposite sides have to be equal. So this has to be 6. Now, we know that this entire length has to be 11 because 5 plus 6 is 11. And if this is 11, see if you can figure out the length of this missing side over here. That's right. It has to be 9 because this little side down here is 2, and this entire length has to equal 11, just like the right side, and 2 plus 9 is 11. We still have one missing side that we have to figure out, this one up here. To find it, let's put another dashed line down on the bottom. Now, why don't you put in how long this dashed line segment is? Good. Now we can see that the entire bottom part has a length of 13 because 9 plus 4 is 13. And with this information, we can figure out how long the top side is. Go ahead and figure out the top. Excellent. It has to be 10 because this entire length up here has to be 13, just like the bottom. And then there's 3 here, and that leaves 10 for the top side. Finally, we've got all the side lengths. Now you can go ahead and calculate the perimeter. Exactly. So the perimeter is 48 units. We don't know whether that's inches or feet or something else since the units weren't labeled. But that's how you can find missing sides of a figure in order to do a perimeter calculation. One thing that makes a perimeter calculation a little easier is when the figure has symmetry. Symmetry means that the two sides of the figure match. They're mirror images of each other, actually. For instance, a rectangle has symmetry because you can run a line through the middle like this and it cuts the rectangle into two halves that match. You can cut a figure in half like this with a line and the halves match up, then that's called bilateral symmetry. And then the dashed line is called the line of symmetry.
And actually, a rectangle also has symmetry this way. See, these are also matching halves. This is bilateral symmetry, too. Now let me ask you a couple of questions. Here's another figure. Does this have bilateral symmetry? That's right. A horizontal line cuts this figure into two matching halves, so that's why this qualifies as bilateral symmetry. It doesn't have a vertical line of symmetry because, see, a vertical line doesn't create matching halves. These two sides are different. The figure does have a horizontal line of symmetry. Here's another figure. This has bilateral symmetry. But why don't you tell me, is the line of symmetry vertical or horizontal? You got it. See, a vertical line cuts the star into matching halves, but a horizontal line won't. See, these two halves are different. Some figures have a line of symmetry that's not vertical or horizontal. Here's a rectangle again. And now watch this. This is a diagonal line, but it still cuts the figure into matching halves. See, these match up. And we could draw another line of symmetry here. These two are also matching halves. So this is also a line of symmetry. A rectangle then actually has four lines of symmetry. One, two, three, four. Technically, the way to tell if a figure has bilateral symmetry is to imagine flipping it. For instance, with this figure, what if we could pick the figure up right here and just lift it off the notepad and flip it over like this? What would happen is the top half would go down to the bottom, and the bottom half would go underneath and end up on top. The two halves would just trade places. But here's the important thing. The figure would look exactly the same as it did before. When you flip a figure like this, it's actually called a reflection. We did a reflection of this figure across the horizontal line of symmetry. But when you do a reflection and when the figure looks exactly the same afterward, then you know that the figure has bilateral symmetry. That's the technical way of determining if something has bilateral symmetry. There's another kind of symmetry besides bilateral that I should tell you about. It's called rotational symmetry. Let's look at the star again. What if instead of flipping this over a line, what if we rotated it like this? The star doesn't change at all. It's exactly the same shape as it was before. When you can rotate a figure and it doesn't change shape, then the figure has rotational symmetry. Of course, it doesn't count if you go all the way around. Any figure would look the same if you did that, because it's just right back where it started. But if you can go part way around and make the figure look exactly the same, then the figure has rotational symmetry.